So in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about types of light bulbs and how the research in quantum phenomena actually allowed us to build much more efficient, more effective light bulbs. So let's start off with the original incandescent light bulb. And as you can see here, I've produced some of my finest artwork in drawing you a sketch of an incandescent light bulb. So the key parts. In the middle here you have a filament and this filament is connected to whatever power source you're using so maybe if you're in a lab they're connected to batteries or power packs in your home obviously they're connected to the national grid and what happens when you plug it in is this filament gets really hot and it starts giving off lots of different wavelengths of radiation so the, I've drawn these ones in red because they're in the infrared section so incandescent light bulbs get really really hot give off lots in the ultraviolet sorry infrared and they also students in blue ones give off a load in the ultraviolet so there we've got some ultraviolet there and finally what you get with some of the energy is actually converted into useful light which is what we would actually be able to see coming from the light bulb. So we've got this infrared, we've got this ultraviolet which is completely wasted energy and we get a little bit of visible light which is obviously the useful part of it. So this was great for many many years obviously because it was better than anything else that we had at the time. But then all these quantum phenom phenom phenomena that you've been learning about come into play and we actually get a new type of light bulb. Behold, we have here the fluorescent, let's see if I can spell this correctly, fluorescent bulb. There we go. So we have a fluorescent bulb, isn't that exciting? Woo! So we've got our fluorescent light bulb here, and the setup is slightly different because in here, what you have are two electrodes. So instead of a filament this time, we actually have electrodes, and those again are connected to the national grid. So what happens is a large potential difference builds up between them, and actually that leads to some of the the gas in between them becoming ionized and you get some free electrons moving around. So once you've got those free electrons you have the potential to cause excitation as one of the ways you can excite things is by collision of an electron. So by having a large potential difference on the electrodes that allows some of the the gas that's inside to become ionized so you get some free electrons which can cause excitation. So typically gases that you have inside the bulb that become ionized are your argon gases. So you use some sort of inert gas that's not going to have some sort of reaction. And also inside your fluorescent bulb light bulb there's some mercury. Now why mercury you might ask? Well, it's particularly useful because of the energy gaps in mercury. It gives out a very specific wavelength of of the, from in the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. So we've got free electrons, we've got some mercury, how are we actually getting the fluorescent light out of this? Well, as the potential difference builds up you actually get vaporized mercury building up in here and you get the free electrons that are in there colliding with that vaporized mercury. And then, so, those at atoms of vaporized mercury get excited as the electrons inside their structure get moved up to higher energy levels. So if we think of our structure of mercury, so this, this atomic symbol for mercury is Hg. So if we just think of maybe an electron in ground state, an electron hits it, and it gets moved up here into an excited state. Now, as you'll have learned about, an excited state is not a stable state. Everything wants to be get into its lowest energy level to the most stable. So this electron is going to de-excite back down again 
causing a um, photon to be emitted. Now you might be like, well hey, we've got a photon, so we've got our light from our light bulb. Wrong! This photon is actually ultra violet. Okay, so you've got the mercury, the mercury's been excited, it's de-excited, emitting a photon, but it's in the ultraviolet spectrum. What a waste of time. Well, not quite, because of something else that's in play here. So, around the surface of your fluorescent light bulb, we have a layer of a, well, a material and it's, they're usually made of phosphors, so sometimes you have these bulbs called phosphorescent light. And the best thing about this is, is the phosphor the interacts, the electrons in the phosphor interact with the photons of ultraviolet light. So what happens? Well, you've interacted, so it would get excited, and then the phosphor would de-excite again. But the energy gaps in the phosphor are different. So, although you've had ultraviolet light going in, you actually get visible white light coming out just because the energy gaps in the phosphor are different and is de-excited by different amounts. So, let's just start leaving it. So we have our phosphor here. So, we've got our mer mercury labelled here. So, Let's talk about what happens. So, we get an electron. Between the electrodes, the, the gas in there gets ionised, we get free electrons. This electron collides with the mercury atom, which has been vaporised due to the conditions inside the bulb. So from there, we get a photon of ultraviolet light. This interacts with an electron in phosphor, causing it to be excited. It de-excites then producing photons in the visible spectrum, and obviously it has to produce a variety of different colours. Unfortunately, I don't have access to the full spectrum right now, because that would take far too long. But because it produces white light, obviously it's producing all the colours of the visible spectrum, and actually you get lots of light. So why is this better than incandescent light bulbs? Well. The simple fact is, in incandescent light bulbs, the infrared and ultraviolet that is given off, and is actually the majority of the radiation given off by the filament, is never recovered. It's just wasted. So you'll, if you touch a bulb, it gets really, really hot because you're wasting so much in the infrared spectrum. Fluorescent light bulbs, that doesn't happen. Most of what's emitted is actually in the ultraviolet, and then obviously that's converted into visible light. So you get extremely high efficiency with this because the majority of the energy is usefully transferred. So I want to talk one last thing. So you may have heard of something called flicker. So if we just have our basic bulb again. If we have this connected to our national grid, you may have heard that the national grid operates at 50 hertz. Now, our national grid is an alternating current grid. So that means if you plugged an ammeter or another device to measure current into your wall, what you'd see the current doing is alternating like this. So it's alternating between being positive and being negative. And if it's at 50 hertz, that means there are 50 of those cycles in a second. So let's take that back to our looking at the light bulb. I've used an incandescent one here, just an example. It's the same with a fluorescent bulb. If you think, in this element here, the current is doing this all the time. So if we take our starting position, that over here on the right-hand side, actually at that point, there's no current. So if there's no current, obviously the filament's not going to be heating. It's not going to be giving out radiation. So at this point here, you're getting no radiation. If we go up to the top here, we've got to our maximum current. Oh, that's So we're going to get some radiation coming out at this point. And it drops back down again, back to zero. Again, not getting any light. So what we've got here is a continuous changing of it being 
switched on, so actually having current and it giving out radiation, and actually these periods where it's actually not giving out anything at all. Now if you think about it, if there are 50 sets of these in a second, you're actually getting a hundred flickers per second, because if, if you think how you get the number of them on a cycle. But luckily our eyes don't see that fast. So due to the, the nature of the frequency we're using, we actually can't see the fact that light bulbs are flickering. But obviously if the frequency ever drops and it starts to slip into the region of being in our visible spectrum, and this isn't something that would happen with the national grid, but it could happen with some other type of power source, you would actually see the light bulbs flicking and going on and off, on and off continuously, which is actually what's happening. And that's something called flicker.